Hello, welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for listening today. You know, there's a, a growing number of researchers and practitioners that are producing work that shows that neurofeedback is evidence-based. But the question is, can we point to that work when we need it? Our guests in studio today are Carol Shiflett and Mary Lee Esty, both uh, authors of the book Conquering Concussion, Healing TBI Symptoms with Neurofeedback and Without Drugs. They're in studio today with us to discuss the latest research and results of neurofeedback in a number of medical issues. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, ladies. Thank you. And good morning to you. Good morning. Glad that you're, uh, you're here with us. Um, I am not familiar with neurofeedback. Our listeners are mainly healthcare professionals, many of which who may be familiar with neurofeedback. And I'm certainly not familiar with neurofeedback as it relates to traumatic brain injury. Um, Carol, tell us a little bit about your uh, background and how it relates to TBI. Well, I had a TBI myself, several. And uh, um, I also had a lifelong history of migraines. And I discovered this in part because of uh, going to Mary Lee for treatment. Mm -hmm. And the um, I thought I was being treated for um, TBI, but intriguingly, my migraines started to disappear, my mm -hmm. lifelong incapacitating, debilitating migraines. Um, so it was, it was quite an experience. Um, and I would say, yeah, this works. Once you have that, you want to yeah. know more. And it was an un unexpected uh, success, yeah? Oh, very much so. So, Mary, uh, in your experience, has this is this something that you find common? Someone comes for treatment for one thing when, in fact, maybe one or two or a number of things are addressed positively. Oh, yes. I mean, just currently, for example, I'm treating our combat veterans, Iraq, Afghanistan, and others for uh, TBI and post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. I have one study now in the Journal of Neuropsychiatry, and we have an ongoing study. And primarily they come because of the cognitive problems after concussion, you know, blast mm -hmm. injuries and, and blunt trauma injuries, and for post-traumatic stress. But this year we actually have an article entitled Neurotherapy for Chronic Headache Following Traumatic Brain Injury. It's mm -hmm. in military medical research because... It's very interesting that these, these people have really pretty terrible headaches. Uh, you know, when you get stuff thrown at you by a blast, mm -hmm. and you know, we've had mm -hmm. people as close as 10 to 20 feet away mm -hmm. from um, a suicide bomber. Mm -hmm. it, it's a hydraulic injury. Every cell in the body has this blast wave and vacuum wave followed just in your know, microseconds, milliseconds from each other. And just the training and all of the heavy weight and stuff that they carry causes a lot of headache. And much to my surprise, I don't pretend to understand why it happens, um, their headaches either disappear or just enormously reduce. So it's a, what is it? it's a well, as Carol described it, it's, I didn't expect this to happen, but <laughs> isn't it nice that it did? So, now, and there are more and more physicians now who are using neurofeedback, especially psychiatrists who get yeah. extremely interested, and some neurologists, because we're treating the whole system. It's treating the whole body. When you treat the motherboard, the brain, all kinds of things can happen. So, yes, it's somewhat in its infancy, but not really, because people have been doing this for a long time. Uh, enough body of evidence, for example, um, with uh, treating people, adults and children, who have been diagnosed with attention deficit or attention deficit with hyperactivity, finding that, in fact, the cause may have been and probably is early childhood injury. Mm. Plus, the same symptoms that follow, you know, listed under post-concussion are, you know, almost identical to the, the items in the category for a diagnosis and deficit. Mary, you're talking about um, these results. You mentioned the brain as, as the motherboard, and you're fixing, you know, you're treating the motherboard, and these things, uh, these other things are miraculously, uh, well, not even really mi miraculously uh, addressed, because if we would have started with the brain, you know, realizing the connection in the first place, we may have uh, addressed some of these issues you know, sooner. Now, you've 
both written this book, Conquering Concussion, Healing TBI Symptoms with Neurofeedback and Without Drugs. You mentioned um, the popularity among psycho psychotherapists and psychiatrists uh, in neurofeedback. In the book, are the techniques the same, um, the treatment techniques? Because when it comes to physical TBI and then you've got the psychological issues that are going on, you know, just talking about the military aspect, you've got the psychological situation, whether they're injured or not. But now they're injured with a t with TBI and they've got these mental stressors as well. Does the neurofeedback, is it applied or used in totally different ways? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, in well, it was around 2007, the Journal of um, the American Medical Association had a study by uh, Colonel Hogue, Charles Hogue, 2,000-some mm -hmm. Iraq-Afghanistan veterans. And basically, they were trying to find a way to distinguish diagnostically between mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. concussion, and found that you really can't do it. <laughs> they, you know, if you're in a situation that is life-threatening in combat, it's probably also involved, uh, you know, some kind of physical damage. Mm -hmm. Regardless, the whole system changes. Um, we, in fact, I think one example of this is the really sometimes uh, very long list of prescription medications that people are on mm -hmm. uh, when they, you know, after they come back to Walter Reed or just come home to try to deal with the symptoms, but the symptoms that they are dealing with are both the body pain, or can be the body pain, and the psychological problems of sleep and hypervigilance. Yes. And what we have demonstrated in the study that's published in the Journal of Neuropsychiatry is that just doing the same protocol with everyone, exactly the same protocol, lots and lots of these medications are no longer needed, and, and they were uh, taken off of them, and that continues. We recently had a medic here who uh, her prescription meds for a variety of symptoms, neurological symptoms, depression, sleep, mm -hmm. totaled, if, if taken exactly as directed, 76 pills every day. Wow. 76 pills a day. That's 76 pills a day. I mean, we we have, we have a picture of all of the bodies and <laughs> or bottles. Bottles. <laughs> <my body. laughs> um, and by the time we were about halfway through our study protocol, which is 25 half-hour treatments, uh, sh only two were being taken. That's amazing. That, and that that's was amazing. because uh, she needed a blood thinner. But it, it sounds, it sounds amazing. Out and touches many, many, many systems. Right. Now, uh, Carol, in your experience, have you um, been able to uh, latch on to any feedback from the military? Uh, you know, they, they prescribe 70 plus drugs to a returning vet. And uh, with your treatment, they need two or maybe none of these drugs. What kind of feedback and response do you get when saying, hey, you know, our methods are just, you know, blowing yours out of the water? Um, a lot of what is said when somebody goes back and says, wow, look at this, um, is pretty much along the lines of, oh, it must be placebo effect. And my, my feeling about that is, well, if this is placebo, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I spent, you know, years and 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 years, um, not getting a response to any of the migraine treatments that I went through and I tried everything. Um, but you know, you have people, uh, for example, um, uh, light sensitivity is a very, very common symptom of migraine, but also of head injury. And it's amazing to have somebody walk in, one treatment, they come back the second time, and they're not wearing dark glasses anymore. Um, and that's not placebo. Now, d just one answer that goes to the military. We have uh, people from, uh, well... SOCOM, the Special Forces, mm -hmm. medics uh, from Fort Bragg, sending us people they have not been able to help because they've seen what can happen. 
that same observing those results also again with speaking only now for military mm -hmm. and this includes fighter pilots um, paratroopers rangers seals you know you name it mm -hmm. so we have just finished a study with the traumatic injury research program at USIS, which is it's a long it's an acronym for mm -hmm. a long name it's the military medical school here at Bethesda mm -hmm. and Actually, some of the researchers there said, and I quote, we've never seen anything this fast, this good. Wow. So it I works. guess... Uh, and, and, and the reason yeah. that the, 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 the service members li really like this, because unlike the traditional programs now, where for post-traumatic stress, for example, you're to talk repeatedly about the traumas you've been through. They never, ever have to tell me anything they've been through. And the changes still occur. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. Now, where can our listeners get a copy of uh, this book, Conquering Concussion, Healing TBI Symptoms with Neurofeedback and Without Drugs? It's in bookstores, Barnes & Noble, and so forth, and also, of course, on Amazon. And we've just released the Kindle version. And do you have a, a website uh, of your own? Uh, Mary Lee's website is brainwellnessandbiofeedback.com. Okay, uh, could you pr repeat that for me just one more time? Uh huh. Brain wellness and biofeedback dot com. Brain wellness. And Mary Lee spelled out. And Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Great. Well, I thank both that, of you all. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, that includes uh, uh, book information, but it also has a number of testimonials from uh, these wounded vets. And yeah, we have client. videos, wonderful videos of them describing their experiences and what they're doing now you know, right. in college. A couple, right. of, uh, one getting a doctorate now in neuroscience. Okay, absolutely Who wonderful. Could not read after injury. You couldn't read after injury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything is working out now. Everything is working. Oh, yeah. Wow! Yeah. Don't Amazing. graduate college with A's and get into a doctor program. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> she is having a great time. That's uh, that's everything is working. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well enough. Well, I thank you both for uh, coming into studio with us today. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm hoping you'll return. Thank you so much, Neil. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Carol Shiflett and Mary Lee Esty, both of which uh, authored the book Conquering Concussion, Healing TBI Symptoms with Neurofeedback and Without Drugs. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.